So you want to start a podcast? Sure, of course you do. Every man and their dog have their own podcast these days. And how did you find out about DMT? But the idea of editing together a 45 minute to potentially a three hour long podcast video seems a little daunting. Well, the truth is, it's actually easier and not as daunting as you think. I'm currently the editor of the Breaking Bread podcast with Josh Gudgeon and Beard Meets Food, the I've Got Your Back podcast with Ben Pearson, and I've also recently started my own audio-only podcast called Face the Music, which you can check out the first episode on Spotify right now. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to cover three major areas of podcasting. Recording audio, filming video, and editing a podcast. So firstly, let's talk audio. You are gonna need a good quality microphone. That goes without saying. I'm currently using an SE2200 microphone. This one right here that I'm using to record the audio on this video is what I personally use for my own podcast. I'm also a music producer and this is primarily a vocal recording microphone for singers, rappers, and anything like that. This isn't a microphone that's purely intended for podcasting alone. This is a pretty versatile microphone. I've always really liked how just nice and crispy my voice sounds in it. And it's actually a pretty cheap microphone. You can pick one of these up for usually somewhere around 180 pounds online, which I think is a really good price. And I've had one of these microphones before. I had the SE2000 and that was a really good microphone and lasted me about five or six years. It's a super light, durable microphone and super portable as well if you wanted to take your podcast on the road. And yeah, this is the one I personally use. So if you like the sound of it on this video, this is what I'm using. I also have another microphone, the Aston Stealth. A little bit more expensive in the region of around 300 pounds. But with this microphone at the top, it has a built-in pop shield, which is this fuzzy little thing right here. And if you take a look at my SE, I currently have this ring on at the moment. That is a pop shield. And the Aston Stealth has that built into it, which is great. It also has these switches on the bottom, which changes the EQ of the mic to suit either a male voice or a female voice or anybody you're recording really. But the only problem I've had with that microphone in vocal recording for music purposes is it can be a little bit muggy, a little bit warm. And I like that nice crispy tone that the SE offers, but it's a great talking microphone. I just personally don't use it for music production as I feel it can have a bit of a muggy tone to it. You don't need to spend more money on the Aston Stealth. The SE does a fantastic job. For the Breaking Bread podcast and the Ben Pearson podcast, we currently use the Rode NT1A microphones which can cost you around 150 to 230 pounds. Again, not too expensive. You can get good quality microphones for a pretty decent price if you wanted to podcast. Yeah, those are the microphones we use. They sound really nice and warm. They have a nice bottom end to them. So you get quite a lot of bass out of someone's voice. And with a little bit of tweaking in post, these microphones can be really good at sounding very intimate and very close to the ear. So if you are listening to a podcast, you want it to sound like someone is talking directly to you. And these microphones sound great for that. Something you also need to consider with the microphone is a tabletop mic stand. You can usually pick up something like this for around 20 to 30 pounds. They're really not that expensive. You can get your cheaper options with brands like Tortec, or you can go for the Rode options, which are a bit more expensive, but they're not really that expensive in the grand scheme of things. They're probably the cheapest thing you can buy for podcasting. But I would definitely recommend not cutting corners and going for a really, really cheap option because if you get a flimsy mic holder, some mics can be quite heavy. So if you put the mic on a cheap, tacky mic holder, it might not even be able to hold the weight of the microphone. The last thing you want mid podcast is for your mic to just drop right in front of you. You need that to be held sturdy. So definitely spend around 20 to 30 pounds on this. You're gonna also need a good quality mixing desk to capture that audio. A good option if you're wanting to record up to about four microphones is the Rodecaster Pro. This is what we use on the Breaking Bread and the Ben Pearson podcast. This is fantastic because you can mute channels mid-podcast, you can edit the levels all mid-podcast. And we've been recording the podcast for around six months now and we're yet to encounter a problem really with the Rodecaster Pro. You can pick up these for around 500 pounds, which is a little bit more on the expensive side but it's definitely worth it if you want up to four channels of recording and for it to be reliable, good quality and a wealth of settings. However, if you're recording a solo podcast or just a two person podcast and you don't need all those channels, then I would just suggest getting a Focusrite interface, which I personally use for my music production. You can usually pick one of these up for around 100 to 150 pounds. You get two channels on it, super simple to set up. You just have to plug it into a computer, a Mac, and I personally use it and plug it in through Logic Pro. You can use GarageBand as well, because that's a free option, and that can capture the audio. These are really good, really versatile, super light and portable as well if you want to take it on the road, and they're relatively easy to set up. 
So that's audio covered. Now let's talk about how to film your podcast. If you're wanting to film your podcast, you're gonna need at least one camera. It depends how many camera angles you want to include in your podcast. For example, you can have a camera angle on the host, a camera angle on the guest, and potentially a third wide angle just to capture all the subjects in one shot. When it comes to buying cameras for the sole purpose of recording a podcast, it is really down to personal preference, but there are a few things that you need to know and a few features that you need to be aware of if you are buying a camera for that purpose. Number one, the recording time limit. You can't record a multiple hour long podcast on a camera that is only capable of recording up to 30 minutes in one continuous shot which for most DSLR cameras is the standard cutoff point at 30 minutes. You'll set the camera running and talk for about an hour or an hour and a half, and then come to the camera at the end and realize that it stopped filming mid podcast. Absolute disaster. Or you'll constantly be having to go up and mess with the camera, restarting it again every 30 minutes, which for one will just entirely ruin the dynamic of the conversation on your podcast. And also is gonna be an absolute bitch to edit. Now the reason why DSLR cameras have a 30 minute recording limit is because once it goes over 30 minutes, the camera is considered an official video camera which has higher tax laws. So companies that produce DSLR cameras manually put in the 30 minute time limit just to avoid these tax laws. It absolutely sucks, but there is some good news. There are a lot of cameras out there that are capable of recording longer than that 30 minute time limit. And some cameras don't even have a time limit at all. One camera that doesn't suffer from this recording time limit and can be quite affordable depending which model you buy is the Panasonic Lumix GH series. A GH4 online does state that it has a 220 minute time limit, which should be more than enough for podcast recording by the way, but they might be harder to get hold of as they're an older camera, so you might have to look for a used one, which could set you back around 300 to 400 pounds, which on the camera scale is pretty cheap. However, the latest GH6 has no recording time limit at all, but brand new can cost you a hefty 1500 to 2200 pounds, which is all before you even consider a lens. Some cheaper options for cameras that can record past the 30 minute time limit are the Sony a6100, the Sony a6400 and the a6600, which depending on which model you buy can range between 700 to 1300 pounds. But you might be able to pick up a used a6100 for around 600 pounds, so not too bad really. For the podcast we shoot, we currently use a Sony FX3, a Sony A7S3, and for the wide angle, we use a Sony FS5 Mark II, which combined could cost upwards of £12,000. So if you're really wanting to take it seriously, or just upgrade your current podcast to a higher level, this is what we use for the Breaking Bread podcast and the Ben Pearson podcast. So if you like the footage you're seeing, that is what we shoot it on. But definitely don't get these cameras to start off with. This should be an aim, a goal, something to work towards getting those cameras because that is a lot of money to spend. Start at an entry level and work your way towards that when you get a bit more of an understanding about the gear that you're using and the gear you're buying. Because some of these cameras have a lot of extra features for lots of different types of shooting, which if you're just using them for a podcast, you don't need all those features. So you could be paying a lot of money for a camera that has all these special features that you're just never gonna use. Another thing to consider is battery life. The last thing you want to do is set up filming and think, ah, oh, great, I've got no recording time limit on my awesome brand new camera. There's no risk of it cutting off mid podcast. I'm all set. And then for your battery to just die mid podcast. If you have a camera with a short battery life, then it is not meant for recording podcasts. But luckily for you, the cameras that I mentioned before have at least roughly around two hours of recording time. So it should be fine. And some of the cameras as well, you can charge while you're recording anyway. So you should be fine. Before you buy any camera, whether I've mentioned them in this video or it's a camera that I've not mentioned, just make sure to research the battery life and just make sure that it can last long enough for the duration of at least one podcast. Right, now let's move on to editing. It may seem really daunting at first, the idea of editing together a multiple hour long podcast, but actually it is really easy and it doesn't take that much editing skill to do. You don't have to be a pro video editor to be able to do this. The only thing is it can be pretty tedious depending on how you do it. But let's take this to the Mac and I'll show you how it's done. So if you have multiple camera angles, you need to make sure they're all in sync. I use Final Cut Pro personally for all my editing. What I do is create a multicam sequence, which will scan all the separate camera angles and put them in sync for you. And then when you want to change camera angles, all you have to do is press one, two, or three to switch. Obviously, if you have more camera angles, you continue four, five, six, etc. 
It's very easy to edit, but as I say, can be very, very tedious. You'll also need to take the properly recorded audio and line that up with what's on screen. A good way to create a reference point is to all clap once everything's recording. Then you can find that little spike in the audio and line them up. Remove the audio from the video clip and then you should be good to go. One last thing I want to mention is that just editing one podcast episode this way can take up an entire working day. So if you're looking to get out daily or multiple podcasts a week, you could find yourself not having enough time to edit. Recently on the Breaking Bread podcast, we introduced using a live camera switcher. This means that I sit behind the cameras and switch angles live as it happens. This saves so much time in editing and means that essentially once you stop the recording, the podcast is pretty much finished. Unless you want to tweak a couple of things in post, like adding an intro, outro, or any other things like that. Some of these switches also have a feature where the angles will switch on their own depending on who's talking, which you might have seen used on Jackmate's Happy Hour podcast. However, sometimes it can be a little bit glitchy and might be less reliable, but if you're wanting to turn out multiple podcasts a week, then the small sacrifice in precision is definitely worth it to keep up with the busy release schedule. So that's pretty much it. We've talked about in this video how to record audio for a podcast, how to film video, and how to edit. Honestly, don't worry if you don't have a ton of money, you don't need a ton of money to start a podcast. At the end of the day, as long as your podcast is entertaining, that's the only thing that matters. People can look past the quality and will just enjoy the entertainment value. But if anyone has any questions about this video or wants to know some more information, just comment below. I will get back to as many people as I can and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.